Hello, Dread Central audience. How are you doing today? I love it. It's so great to meet you. I'm such a big fan. And I'm excited to talk about this new movie that you're a part of today, which is Dead by Midnight, Why to Kill. Have you seen it yet? Yes, I have. And it's it's so good. It's witty. It's so mm -hmm. different from anything else. It um, it just has its own like niche. It's it's really cool. It's very cool. It's very funny, but it's also gross. Like it doesn't it's not afraid to be nasty. It isn't. And I like that. I like that. It's like it's it's going to do very well. I think I think very well. Big time. I love horror anthologies. I was wondering, do you have any other favorite anthologies, maybe like of short stories or movies or even from TV? Oh boy, I'm trying to think. I did one in Paris that was really cool. And I, I can't say the name of it because it's French. Okay. So well. I, I don't remember the name of it. Anthologies that I really like. Um, did you ever watch American Horror Story? I did not like aggressively, but I did watch it. I liked the witches one. That was my favorite one. I would say that's my carnival. favorite one too. And the carnival oh, was good. Yeah. That was really good. I love witch content. I'll take as much of it as I can get. Oh, me too. It was so great. It was so great. I love that your segment in Dead by Midnight plays into the horrors of like artificial intelligence and household assistance. Do you have one, a household assistant, like one of the Googles or one of the Amazons? No, I don't. I'm like not very tacky. Nah, well, maybe it's it good. Be, it would be neat. It would mm -hmm. be great to have that though, if I could figure it out. And also, my internet sucks here, so it would ah. be it would it would probably lock the house down or something like that. I mean, if the movie has any indication, you know, maybe it's for the best. These things might be dangerous. Yeah, they might be. They might do all kinds of weird stuff because I, it's like. Uh -huh. How do you like Alexa or whatever? You ask her something and she answers it in like weird ways. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of creepy, although I like mine. Otherwise, if it wasn't for mine, I'd never wake up in the morning. It's, it's my alarm clock. Uh, oh, that's good. Yeah, it's cute. I was wondering, how did the filmmakers um, get in touch with you? Did they reach out to you or did you already know them? How did you get involved? I did not know them. I did not know them. They um, got through to my manager, Judy Fox, and gave me a call. And I didn't call me, but she called me. And I was in Florida at the time. I was just getting ready to move from Florida to California. And I said, oh, that sounds fun. I'll do that. And they made me this really cool dress for it. I love the dress. Oh, did you get to keep it? No, I didn't get to keep it. Oh, uh, that's too bad. Do you maybe for part keep... two? Part two, maybe. Yes, it, it should be in the contract. You know. Yes, it should be in the contract. So, I mean, it goes without saying. You're a horror legend. You've been in so many classics. What's it like engaging with fans that are so invested in your work? Oh wow, it's sometimes it's hard to realize because I, I understand it in a lot of ways because I, when I see somebody that I really admire or like their work, I am so shy and I just mumble out all this stuff. And so I can appreciate it, but um, I can't understand. I'm like, it's just me. I'm like, I just uh -huh. did this. And it's like, it's very awkward for me, kind of. Yeah. Even after, you know, even after all of the big films, you still kind of feel that way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I do. I do. Cause I can never see a film like someone else can because I worked on it and then it's me in the part. So it's like, I'm a little bit shy about it. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to see it from another perspective. There's another, I mean, there's a few mega horror icons in this movie, but one of the big ones is Kane Hodder. Um, do you know Kane yourself? Yes, I do. He is great. He's a good actor. Uh huh. Definitely. Um, how long have you known him? Oh my gosh, we're going back a long way. Um, we did a convention. Oh my gosh, it was in the eighties, I believe. The Zombie Jamboree in Pittsburgh, cool. and that's where I first met him. Pretty much. Yeah. And so he's been around a lot. Did you ever see him in um, The Good Things Devils Do? 
No, tell me about it. Oh my God. He is like so despicable in it, <sighs> but he did a great job. It shows what a good actor he is. Yeah, I hear in real life, he's really sweet, which is- He is, cool. he's very sweet. He'll strangle you though. Hey, I, and it's my dream. It's not like, yeah, <laughs> it's not like a little strangle. He really gets into <laughs> it. Are there any other horror icons that fans might be surprised to know or like are really nice in real life? Oh, let's see, are surprised. Mm -hmm. Well, Angus Scrim was really, really nice. Really? Real classy guy. Really? Um, Gunnar Hansen. Wow. He was really, really nice. He was shy. He never, he did not think that anybody would know him. And we worked on Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. And I said, you have got to go to conventions. People will go nuts. He's like, oh, people don't care about me. They don't, you know, and then he started going. And I'm so glad because he was a hit. He was oh, a hit. Yeah, everyone loves him. I know. And he had no clue. He was living in Maine, not knowing that he was like, really well thought of wow and he had a fan base he had no clue oh yeah fans are are obsessed you yeah know, you guys have scared so many people over the years with all your movies and i've always been curious do you have any phobias yourself like what scares you oh my gosh i am phobic about rats and mice i'm oh. so scared of them really I, yes i even got a rat to try to get over my fear of them but it never worked. I mean, I, I could handle the rat, but it's just like when I see them somewhere, it just freaks me out. It's the tail. Oh yeah. The tails are weird. They're cute. The, the, the top halves are cute, but the bottom half yeah. are so weird. I know if they didn't yeah. have the tail, it'd be fine. Cause they're like squirrels or anything like that or hamsters or, <laughs> you know, but it just freaks me out. Did you give him a name? Yes, his name was um okay, what was his name? <laughs> Eddie. That's a good that's a good name for a rat. I like that. And then I had another one called Benny that was his his friend. Oh, and you were scared of them, but you took good care of them, and that's nice. Yes. Yes. Uh, I assume you're an animal person. Yes, I've got a sanctuary here with 14 dogs, four cats, and two goats. That's amazing. I love animals myself. I've got a poodle. He's being very good right now. Yeah, they're smart. Oh, smart smarter than dog. me. Oh Way my god. Smarter than me. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Put yeah. them in charge of your finances and everything. They'll like <laughs> do a great job. What was your relationship with horror movies before you started acting in them? Oh, I loved horror movies. My friend and I would always have sleepovers, and they would come over, and we would watch all the the greats, you know, of course, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Night of the Living Dead, the original one, and um, all the, the, um, oh God, what's his name? He's like famous. Oh my God, I can't think of his name. That's okay. Uh, we have the same birthday too. Oh, well, like the pit and the pendulum, um, House of Wax. He was in House Vincent of Wax. Vincent Price. Vincent Price, how could I forget his name? <laughs> you have the same birthday as Vincent Price. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And I think yeah. Christopher Lloyd too. Whoa, icons. I yeah. know. So I'm in with some good ones. House of Wax still scares me today. And I have to say, yeah. I like the remake. Oh, yeah, it's good. Is that the one with Paris Hilton in it? You got it. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> it is good. It is good. It's like, it's such a creepy type premise. It's, ugh. Yeah, I know. I like that kind of stuff. I do um, too. So what's going on for you this summer? Do you have, what's your big plans? Anything that we can know about? Let's see. I'm doing a convention in Arizona, Terror, Terror Trader, in a couple weeks. And then I'm doing a couple more shows. And then I'm, I've been directing. And who knows? I have no idea what's ahead. What do you, can I ask what the directing project is about? It's like the Hunger Games, but zombies. Whoa, I, yeah. I can't wait to check that out. Yeah. What have you been like watching or reading lately? Have you had any time to like consume TV or books? <laughs> I don't usually have time, but I did make time when the plumbers were here and I watched Tom and Pamela. Oh, I haven't seen oh, it Pam yet. Pam and Tommy. Was it good? It was. 
was good. There were some spots that were, I think you'd like it. I did not know the, the whole story behind, you know, the tape, but it was pretty interesting. It was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. I think that, you know, she is coming back. They're going to make another Netflix show. I think she's going to produce it. So we're going to hear her side of things too. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Because I guess she didn't have any say in this. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. There were some really killer segments in Y2 Kill, but I think one of my favorite things was the wraparound, the host. She just made me laugh. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I, she I, was funny. She was so good. Yeah. Um, would you make another one if, if the opportunity arose? Oh, yeah, I would. I would. I love to hear that. Definitely. Um, I'd never make another Return of Living Dead because I feel that that film is perfect the way it is. Would you say that's one of your favorite from, from your body of work? Yes. That and Sorority Babes and the Slime Ball Bolorama. Nice. Those two. I know it's a weird, you know, switch, I, but. Uh-huh. It has one of the scariest scenes, I think, in horror, where they have that zombie talking about why it hurts to be dead. Do people oh, that's bring creepy. That up? Yes. <laughs> creepy, yeah. What would you say the scariest movie you've made is? Oh, boy. The one that, like, really gets fans, you know? Oh. I think Night of the Demons mm. gets fans a lot. I think that... You know, because most of them are like tongue in cheek, kind of silly, even though Night of the Demons is kind of silly. It, um, if you're afraid of demons and things like that, it's more frightening to you. Totally. When you were a kid, do you have any memories of horror movies that like, you know, messed you up? Like, was there ever that one movie as a kid that like really freaked you out? Yes. Um, okay. It's the one with, um, Vincent Price were, and I think Charles, is it Charles Bronson? Maybe, isn't it? Where the gorilla goes killing people. He gets this bracelet. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to think, it's not House of Wax. It's, um, oh my God, it's one of my favorites, but there's a scene where it's black and white and everything. And the the killer gets somebody and stuffs this girl up the chimney and the the cops are looking around the house for because they heard screaming there and her hand falls down the chimney and like just like mm-hmm. it's got this bracelet on it it's really creepy that creeped me out Which but that one really i'll think of it i'll think of the name of it but like house of wax um i'll think of it we'll get it but I think that's all for me today. Um, it was amazing getting to ch- chat with you. So thank you for, for sitting down with Dread Central. Well, thank you. Dread Central is the best. Thank you. We think you're the best. Have a great oh, well, rest of your day. 